Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the CSA CSN. That is CSN's newest hybrid. That's 1DD, 1BA. And I do want to thank the AK Audio Store and AliExpress for sending this one out to me. If you look today on their store, it's $15.99 to $17.99 for the mic version. It's been bouncing up and down a little bit, but those are just 25 cents or so changes in price. So it's been fairly constant. So for those who haven't uh, gotten a good look at this one up close, and uh, so some of the more interesting parts of the CSN are actually in the interior of it. So if we can maybe see, so you can sort of see that ramp sloped top of the DD right there. So that, what I think is the KZ XUN driver, I won't try to pronounce XUN and embarrass myself, but that is the new KZ dynamic driver that shows up in some of their models, especially the X models. And it's sort of known for that uh, turbo top hat. Um, so it, it essentially moves air quicker through the dynamic driver and, and supposedly get a stronger base response and a smaller amount of space. So um, that is what I believe that driver is. And the other interesting thing is the BA is actually kind of stuffed right here in the corner. So typically CCA or KZ would actually show or shove the, the BA sort of in the nozzle or closer to the nozzle. And here we see it sort of stuffing in the corner a little bit far away from the nozzle itself. And uh, the shell is actually quite big. It's a bit cavernous for these two components. So kind of interesting design. And I think that's something new that KZ or CCA, the, C the sister company, um, has tried with this model. So something interesting there. So let's get into it. And what everyone sort of wants to know right up front, because most people, the very first people who received the, the CSN said it's really a sort of turned down DQ6, maybe a more refined DQ6, um, a little less edge to it. And I think that's 100% true. Out of the box, it sounds like a toned down DQ6. Why does it sound like a DQ6? In part is because I think they share the same XUN dynamic driver. So it shouldn't be too much of a shock that they sound a little bit familiar. Plus, they are sister companies. They both tend to use the house signature sound. So not, not all that shocking that they would sound a little, sim a little similar. So you can kind of think of it as it's CCA versus KZ. How do you think of these two companies? KZ is the V-shaped fun side. CCA is the more, a little flatter, a little more refined sound. They tend to take KZ models and put their little twist on it, which, which tends to appeal to a broader audi audience, whereas KZ appeals to their bass, guys who are looking for a good amount of bass, a really fun and engaging sound. So that is how I would really characterize the DQ6 versus the CSN. It's um, maybe it's more refined brother, but not not all that all that is true. So so I'll give base and detail to the DQ6. I really like the DQ6 and I really like the base on the DQ6. And I think the triple driver is really helpful with the detail on the DQ6. So I'll give those two bits to the DQ6. Most of the whole midsection, and that was one of the problems that I had with the DQ6, was it's just not not that it's not smooth, it just has some rough patches. That upper bit, and I really got hung up on Sia's cheap thrills. Her voice and the way it rises, how that rises against the sound signature in the DQ6 was just a bit harsh for me, and I spent a lot of time trying to round out that sound. So I'll give most of the mid whole midsection to the CSN. It's just a lot smoother. Two drivers versus three drivers. It just sounds um, a lot more coherent and cohesive. So all the mids to the CSN, treble and stage. That was that's those two are really personal. Do you like a more V shape? That's going to be DQ6. Um, do you like this more polite version? That'll be CSN, and that's going to the CSN will probably appeal to more people, especially those who are treble sensitive, who don't really like that sharp V sound that you get on a on a KZ. And stage is is pretty similar to on um, both of them, so I don't think either one of them is is really all that different from the other. So the other big thing to know about the CSN is the sound signature is a bit strange. It's 
I mean, you can call it a very shallow V, but the way it comes across is the bass is elevated, especially the mid-bass is elevated a little bit, and then it kind of cuts across in a neutral fashion through the mids, and then when you get to the treble, where you're expecting a little rise, there's not that much of a rise. And in fact, there's probably more of a slope down because of the way the level is and the roll-off. It, I call it a drooping L. It sort of it cuts across and then it drops a little bit. So I really spent a whole lot of time bringing up the upper end a little bit with EQ. And if you don't have EQ or aren't that familiar with it, just open up Wavelet, set up the EQ for treble boost, and that'll be way more treble boost than you need, so tone it down. It doesn't need that much. It just needs a tiny bit to bring this upper forward, sharpen those details, and it just gives you a little more aggressive sound. And it, and as a result, it ends up being quite a bit like the DQ6 when you bump the treble up to the level that sounds almost like a DQ6. So it may be too harsh for some people, but um, I sort of prefer that more aggressive side to the CCN than this uh, more neutral, unengaging sound, which uh, that was that. So if you're not an EQ fan, if you have a, a cable fan, this is a sleeved four core copper. It's um, pretty much a neutral cable. It doesn't really add a whole lot to either side. That you end up with this uh, sort of A version of this neutral version. This is the cable that I was going to put in the drawer because it's too bright for most sets. Um, that is sort of perfect for this guy. It just needs a little brightness, a little upper end boost, a little more emphasis to bring out that treble. And uh, so that was why I had a picture, I think, on my channel in the community section of this cable. That was why I, I really stuck with this cable because it really made it more of a V-shape. So quite nice. So... As a byproduct of that, the volume you've got to you've got to give this one quite a bit of volume because of that. That treble is just rolled off, and the level's not quite there, and the details are really hard to find. So give it quite a bit of volume, and make sure you're hearing what you should hear, because uh, it, yeah, you got to notch it up quite a bit. So do that. So what is the sound? We'll call it a slight V shape. Like I said, there's some warmth there. But when you add the EQ, especially on the upper end, it's going to dry it out quite a bit. So I sort of struggled with calling it warm at all because if you add anything to the higher end, it's going to be more of a dry sound. So, But, you know, CCA has got this cleaner sound, a little cleaner than the DQ6. The decay is a little faster, which I wasn't so much of a fan of because it makes it harder to find the details. And the transiency, you know, it's kind of strange. They have this fast decay, but... When you give it complex parts of music, it's still, it's really hard. Everything kind of smears together. It's just not as fast as it actually seems to be. So I struggled with that as well. But for a, a very affordable hybrid with an over polite upper end, it works rather than boosting problems, which is what KZ would have done. So, and I also say it doesn't quite scale as much as the DQ6 or the KS1. And I think the, K, the DQ6 in, in particular with the three drivers, I think, just has an edge there in the detail and resolution. And this one falls a little bit short in that area. So the bass, it's quite extended, but it's got a lot more punch than rumble. And this is another one of these parts of the difference between the DQ6 and the, and the CSN. The DQ6 has a lot more in the sub area. It rumbles a lot more than the CSN. So... If you're a sub bass fan, you might want to look towards the DQ6. And then of the rumble that's there, it, it sort of loses detail and definition for me. It wasn't really my favorite part. And that's really the main reason why I, I said that the DQ6 wins the bass category. Because this one goes low, but it doesn't really sound all that great. Um, in the upper mid bass range on EDM, Robin Schultz Headlights you know, some banging EDM, it sounds really good. It's very good in that part. But when you get towards the lower pit, the lower bit, you know, you can get a, a satisfying punch and thump, but it doesn't quite go as deep as you would like. And then you get something like the Cure's Love Song, this extended mix from the mixed up CD. It's sort of a, um, there's a lot more lower end to it. There's a lot of layers to it. And um, it all becomes a little bit dark and a little bit muddy and, everyone's behind Robert Smith and it all feels a bit cramped. So I didn't really like the low end all that much. The upper bit is, is much better. 
So the mids, not much bleed at all. It's um, clean, like I said, for CSA, for CCA. There's some warmth there, but it will show recessed mids um, on occasion, but it tends to be vocal centric. And part of this CCA new CSN was they, um, if you actually look at the ad, there's a bit on gaming. So I think they tuned it vocal mid centric for that specific reason. They talked about the stage and games, but I think where it really shows itself is in the midsection. It's very vocal centric and the bass is elevated a little bit and the treble rolls off the, the vocals a little bit. But so you end up with, you know, vocals that, that tend to be quite there, quite forward. If you're a blonde lover, um, this one is going to sound a little thin to you. And I think that the DQ six again for you is, is probably closer to what you're expecting on the blonde side. It's just a little thin, but it's great on pop vocals. But when you get into these tight, these slower acoustic, you know, solo vocalists, I think that's where the DQ6 really shines, and it shows the problems in the CSN. And I really had, I keep on harping on the details, but you know, when when there's only a vocalist and maybe another instrument, you know, you're really focused on it, and and I think that's where the lack of details really show up. But the upper mids, like I said, much better than the DQ6. That's Probably one of the common complaints in the DQ6 was it it rises a little bit too high, goes a bit too much far, a bit sharp, you know, a bit shouty. I think all those things are fair criticisms of the DQ6 that um, are much better on the CSN. So another track, so REM's Drive. It sounds okay at first, and Michael Seip will be a little bit recessed. But when you're really listening, because that's a very high-res track on most streaming places, Cobuzz or Tidal, whatever it is, they all tend to have a very high-res version of Drive. And uh, his voice isn't as detailed as I want it to be, and it's a little better when you throw some more EQ at it. But this whole section at 145, where you're trying to hear his vocals versus the drums versus the guitars and the strings, and uh, like I said, this it's not the fastest set, and I think that was... Part of the reason I kept on EQing it to just get a little more layering, a little more differentiation between instruments. And that bit right there is sort of one of those little sections that I kept on EQing um, quite a bit, trying to have the guitars and the strings stay in the mix enough to hear them and follow them. Um, just just a hard bit of music there on the on the CSN. So the treble, like I said, it's just very polite. I don't think there's any other word for it it's uh rolled off the level's a little low um but the extension you could you could hear things out pretty far a little even beyond 10k not a problem but it really i mean i think they just pulled the a typical cca and they just tried to roll it back a little bit like the ca16 so it doesn't sound as metallic because that's what everyone complains about so if you boost the treble there's just a more treble presence better vocals sparkle and air all those things that you get after 10k tend to appear again that are, that were rolled off um, without eq so again better recordings will sound better on this one just because of it's not the most detailed set and i think the more detail you have in recording the more likely to you hear it through the csn i just noticed that some recordings where it's maybe harder on most sets to hear details really hard to find on the on the csn so do keep that in mind. And snare drums and other instruments, um, just some of those faster, complex pieces of music, harder to track on the CSN as well. So staging and imaging, you know, average is pretty much what I would say. It can be mostly between the ears, and I would say the same thing about the DQ, DQ6. Uh, not always between the ears, but it can be. It will widen out, especially if you EQ it a little bit turn the volume up a little bit, you'll get more width to some of the music. Um, but occasionally you'll get this bit like The Cures, that love song bit where all the instruments are behind the vocal and it's really hard to um, keep track of the imaging and the layering and all that stuff just becomes more difficult when everything is cramped in a tighter space like that. But um, for those of you who haven't heard of Amber Rubarth, her sessions from the 17th Ward, track called Strive, um, do check that out. Not necessarily a perfect one on the CSN, although it's really, it's just a wild spatial track to listen to because 
the strings you know, over your left side sound like they're almost in the next room. They're really, really wide. And then there's another string over your right shoulder, and then the percussion seems to be right behind you. It's a wild, spatialized track, and um, I do say go go check that one out, even if you don't have a CSN, because it's a very cool track. So again, that is it for the CSCCA CSN. So thank you guys again for tuning in, and I will see you next time.